What's up, my awesome subscribers? It has been so long since I've done a video. <laughs> I have been pregnant, and we have moved, and life has just been very, very hectic. But I thought that I would give you some updates on my life, as well as on what we are doing to pay for this awesome pregnancy and for this little one to come to this wonderful earth and just have a good life. So... What we have been doing to pay for medical expenses for this pregnancy is an alternative way of having insurance. Now, it's not insurance, but what it is is a Christian health health care plan, a health share plan. Okay, so the one that we've chosen to go with is Christian Healthcare Ministries, and they have been absolutely fantastic. So instead of an insurance where you have a premium and a deductible, things like that, it is a monthly donation. So it's not considered insurance at all, and it is actually exempt from Obamacare, so we don't have to pay the penalty for come tax time if we don't have Obamacare, so neither my husband nor I have any plan through the marketplace we just have been doing CHM and it's worked really well so we did that a little bit last year and didn't have to pay any anything for not being on Obamacare so that was awesome so so far right now I pay 150 a month to be on CHM's gold plan now that is, I'm also on the um, Maternity Brothers Keeper, so that I pay $40 every quarter to be on Brothers Keeper. And what Brothers Keeper means that it'll cover costs far above and beyond. And I'll, I'll send you the, um, excuse me, I'll put the link in the description box below for the exact website that you can go on and find out information on what is eligible for shares, they call it. So it's not coverage. You don't use the insurance terminology that they cover maternity costs. You say they share into maternity costs. So I'll, I'll put in the description box below that link so that you can see exactly what um, that all includes for maternity through CHM. And so far, we have loved our experience. I am due October 3rd and we have had lots of medical bills coming in because this has not been an easy pregnancy. So we have talked with both of our doctor's office as well as the hospital and tell you, what you do is you tell them that you are a self-pay patient because CHM is not an insurance plan and so they're going to consider you self-pay. And as a self-pay patient, a lot of times they'll offer you discounts between 5 to 20% off of medical expenses, which is amazing. So for example, with our, our doctor's bill, because they'll tell you and give you like an estimation of the total cost at the end of pregnancy, and it's called a global fee or a stork package or the global expense. And for our doctor that we've been seeing, that total amount was, I believe, $3,400. And once we told them that we're self-paid, they offered a 15% discount, which brought it to... $2,400, which is awesome. And then with our hospital, I believe that was going to be 13000 And with the self-pay discount, that brought it to $10,000. So with that, that's what you submit to CHM. You tell them, okay, this is a self-pay discount. This is how much they're saying that I need to pay. And then what CHM does is they will send you a check in the mail for reimbursement. And that's the money that you use to pay for the doctor as well as the hospital. Something else to keep in mind 
is that if you end up having an epidural, that you will also receive another bill for the anesthesiologist. That is something that a lot of patients don't know about or forget about, and so they receive all these different bills, and they're going, oh my gosh, Like I didn't know that I was going to receive that. Well, that's how it works. They don't tell you that up front. You have to ask. And it's important that you know those, those, those things and to contact whoever the hospital is contracted with for doing, for their anesthesiologist, it's important for you to also contact that office so then you know how much to estimate that you may be um, charged for, for the anesthesiologist. So once you do that and you have paid the hospital and the OB, then that does not include, so the global packages generally do not include ultrasounds and labs, things like that. So yes, there are bills that we have received above and beyond the $2,400 and the $10,000 from the hospital. And those have so far been the ultrasounds, which have been generally about $300 per ultrasound, and that's within the area that we live. So if you live in a different state, that might be a different cost for you. And so far for labs, it was $90 for the strep B test, which I was kind of not aware how much that would cost. And in the future, if I was ever to have a lab, what I'm gonna first do is find out from the doctor's office what facility they give the lab work to to have it read um or to have it have it have it done like the culture or whatever i don't even know how that all works but basically i went to my ob i had my strep b test done and then i received a bill from a different facility that i guess they had ordered the the lab through and so i got this bill and i was like hold up, I never had a strep B test done through LabCorp. Like, what the, like, what's going on? But that, that's how it works. So that's something to keep in mind. So just a quick summary so far. We pay 150 per month and then $40 on a quarterly basis. And that covers all maternity costs, everything, okay? So you send a, you send CHM, the self-paid discount amount from your OB as well as the hospital. And then CHM sends you a check for the total amount and that's what you use to pay both the OB and the hospital. Now that global fee, that total amount does not include things like ultrasounds and labs. So that you will be personally responsible for along the way. You can be set up on payment plans with those, with your OB for ultrasounds and lab work and you can also ask them for a self-pay discount so for example if it's $300 you can say hey do you offer a self-pay discount of 20% and they may give that to you so depending on how financially stable you are at the time you could pay that off in full or you could pay the $300 on a payment plan over a period of time until you got the reimbursement back from CHM so just because you're getting Doctor's bills from the ultrasounds and the lab work does not mean that CHM does not share into those. They do. So along the way, as you receive bills, you just submit them to CHM. And they take, it just kind of depends. Right now they have about a three-month long period of processing time where that's when you'll get your reimbursement. So just keep that in mind. That is something that like if you're really financially struggling, you might have to think about payment plans to pay for ultrasounds until you get reimbursement. So that's been the only downside of it all, but it's actually kind of nice to like pay for those ultrasounds and then three months later you get reimbursement back and you're like, well, that $300 is literally like back in my pocket as if it had never left. And so it's kind of a nice surprise. <laughs> so we've enjoyed that. And CHM, their customer service is absolutely fantastic. You don't have to wait super long. And they also just are so kind. And what I've done is because I call in a lot and like to make sure all my bills are set. 
What I requested is that I speak with a specific person each time that I called in. So I just got her direct extension. Oh my gosh, pregnancy brain, guys, is such a real thing. <laughs> I just got her direct extension. So every time I call in, I always speak with the same representative. And she knows my account and kind of knows me more personally. So that's been good. Something that I highly, highly, highly recommend is if you have a lot of bills, you have to be able to keep track of them. So I have set up a Google document where you can, you can write down the date of service and the doctor as well as what was done during the appointment. And so every time I go and see the doctor on Google Docs, I just write that down really fast. And then I will, once I receive the bill, I will write down the date that I received the bill and then the date that I submitted it to CHM. And then I will know, okay, which have I not received reimbursement for, which have I received reimbursement for. Once I've received the reimbursement, I'll go ahead and put that date onto the Google Doc. And then once I have that date of service paid off in full, I will also note that and I will note what I paid, when I paid it, and who I spoke with over the phone. So that does seem like a lot to keep track of, and it is. So if you wanna be successful with CHM, you have to be able to be on top of your own medical bills. So you are literally like your, like you are basically your own insurance company. And that might seem like a scary thought, but it's honestly not. It's super simple. You just pay the bills, get reimbursement from CHM, and just call it good. So if you're interested on how I have that set up, please comment down below, and I can send you that, that how I have my Google document set up. And if you're interested in another video, I can do that and explain how that works. Um, another cool thing that was a big deciding factor for us doing Christian healthcare ministries is they cover 45 visits for an incident, okay, they call it an incident, um, for physical therapy. So this pregnancy has been quite difficult for my sciatic pain. <laughs> and um, I got a lot of sciatic pain after I was pregnant and they are sharing up to 45 visits for physical therapy and that has significantly helped. So, so far I've racked up $658 worth for physical therapy and they are sharing into all of that, meaning that that whole amount, if you were using insurance terms, they're covering that whole amount, which they don't say that it's coverage, it's just they share in and that it's eligible for shares. So that's what we've really enjoyed and I cannot rave enough about doing it this way because the other thing too is it's considered a monthly donation and we feel good knowing where our money is going. So because it's Christian based, our money is not going to things like smoking or abortions um, or alcohol, things like that. And they will also share into things like car accidents, but you have to be wearing your seatbelt in order for them to share into that, which I think is fantastic. That's a motivator to wear your seatbelt, I will tell you. Um, but it's just been absolutely fantastic. And it's comforting to know that it's like a donation and that we are self-pay and it's, more self-sufficient as well as you don't have to call in and wait on hold for long long periods of time with your insurance <laughs> um, that's been another big benefit we've absolutely loved it the other part that I've noticed as well is because I used to work in a billing department at a um, health clinic and at the time I had heard a little bit about Christian health shares but just a little bit, like it wasn't that popular, but I feel like, at least from my experience and my personal observation, within the past five years, there's been a big boom of, of health shares going on for 
for Christians. And so the places that I've gone to, at least, like Valley Women's Health and Timpanogos Hospital, they have been familiar with Christian health care ministries and say that they are awesome and that they're good. And so that has been very positive for me that I don't have to explain that too much. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you do go see a physical therapist, that you want to make sure they will put either the CPT codes, which CPT codes, that is the code that is used for a specific procedure. And that's generally saying that that's the code that the insurance will read and determine if they will cover it or not. Now, CHM, in order for them to share into a bill, they need to either have a note of what was done or the CPT code. So the facility that I went to for physical therapy, they did not put the CPT codes on or a description of what was done because I was considered self-pay. And they do that because they wouldn't have to bill insurance. And so that's kind of a sticky situation. You want to make sure that whatever physical therapy place that you go to, make sure to ask them, do you include the CPT codes and or a description of what was done during the visit? Because if, you're, if this third party payer needs that, then we would we would be able to share into that. So luckily for us, I do have a primary insurance that is a major medical. So they say that they don't cover anything with maternity costs. And so luckily I was still able to um, go to this physical therapy place and they billed my insurance with the CPT codes. And when it came back for denial, then that's when I submitted it to CHM for them to share into that $658 bill. So that's just kind of a description of our experience. It's been absolutely fantastic and very encouraging to know that before I even give birth, that our bill is paid off in full for the hospital. Um, something to keep in mind is that I'm planning to have a natural birth, and so that's what we did through the hospital as well as the OB is a, a normal vaginal delivery expense. So if there's additional complications and an epidural is needed, then I would receive an additional bill. But the nice thing about that is that the hospital that I go and see, I'm not sure if this is like across the board for the United States, but the specific hospital that I'm going into, I'm locked into that self-pay discount. So even if I end up having an epidural, they'll still apply that discount to that expense. And so that's what's been nice for us. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I know that's a lot of information, but I think it's really good to be educated on this type of topic and to know what's out there. Now, my husband and I, we are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And as such, we believe that we have a... Uh, God the Eternal Father and His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. We believe that they are three separate beings. And so something to keep in mind is that if you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that CHM, the Christian Healthcare Ministries, they are in line with those values. Now be careful that as you're looking into different um, healthcare ministries to decide which one is best for your family, there's things like Liberty Health Share and one that we do, Christian Healthcare Ministries. And there's another one, I'm not sure of the name, but one of them does say, like, when, when you sign, you state that you do have Christian beliefs, that you are, in fact, a Christian. Um, if you do not believe in the Trinity, there's one that does have you sign that you believe in the Trinity. So make sure that whatever one you're going with is in line with your beliefs and that they are in line with yours. <laughs> so that's what I have for that. And I think that you will surely enjoy Christian Healthcare Ministries if you decide to go that route. And just as a disclaimer, I am not a insurance representative and anything that I say 
is just personal opinion, personal experience. That's what's worked for our family. And if you have a different type of situation where this method may not work for your family, that is totally appropriate and okay. And I really appreciate any comments. If you could like, subscribe, share this with your friends that are wanting a baby soon. Um, I think that that would be awesome. That's something else to keep in mind is that you have to be on CHM before you get pregnant. So if your due date is, if you're, if you get pregnant before you're on Christian Healthcare Ministries, then they won't share into that. It, it would be considered a pre-existing condition, which they wouldn't share into. So make sure that you keep that in mind as well. Um, again, I'm not like an insurance agent or anything like that. I'm just a girl that wants to save some money and be aligned with her beliefs. And that is the best way that we found for our family. So we appreciate you listening and we're so excited to welcome this little infant into the world. And I am just so grateful for all my subscribers. I love you guys. You've really helped me a lot so far. And I hope to be doing more videos as this baby comes. I have some methods that I'm going to be applying. There's the Montessori method, which is more baby led. So you let the baby just um, do as much as the baby possibly can um, for feeding, things like that. I'm also going to be doing what's called elimination communication. And so if you're interested about that, you can ask me questions below and then I'll do a video about that as well. And I'm also going to be teaching this little one Chinese and we'll be speaking on a regular basis Chinese with this baby. So if you want to know more information about how I'm going to be applying all three of those methods into our family life, then let, let me know and watch those videos. And I will see you all next time. Thanks so much. Bye.